Imagine a fighter jet born not in the massive factories of the United States or Russia but in the heart of Iran, under sanctions with limited resources, yet carrying a name that translates to Thunderbolt. The Seek is not just another copy of the legendary F-5. It is Iran's bold attempt to prove to the world that it can design, produce, and fly its own combat aircraft, even under the most extreme international pressure. But why would a country in the 21st century dedicate enormous effort to redesigning a 1960s jet? And how did this aircraft surprise military analysts when it first appeared in 2007? The story of the Sikh is one of politics, resilience, survival, and the rebirth of an aging war machine into something far more symbolic. To understand the Sikh, we need to rewind to the 1960s. During that era, Iran was a close ally of the United States. Under the Shah, the Imperial Iranian Air Force became one of the best equipped in the Middle East. Iran acquired hundreds of F-5 Freedom Fighters and later F-5E Tiger II jets, aircraft that were lightweight, agile, affordable, and easy to maintain. These jets became the backbone of Iran's air power. But after the 1979 Islamic Revolution, everything changed. The United States cut ties, sanctions blocked the supply of spare parts, and Western support vanished overnight. Iran suddenly had dozens of F-5 jets but no way to maintain or upgrade them unless it relied on its own engineers. What could have been a crippling blow to Iran's air force turned into the beginning of a long journey of reverse engineering and innovation. By the 1990s, Iranian engineers had learned to produce their own F-5 parts, and soon entire domestic projects emerged. One of the first results was the Azaraksh, or Lightning, which showed Iran could build a working copy of the F-5. But the real breakthrough came in 2007, when the Sikh, or Thunderbolt, was unveiled. It was not just a restored or copied F-5, it was a redesign with its own unique modifications. The most striking difference was immediately visible. Instead of a single vertical stabilizer, the Seek had twin vertical stabilizers, much like the American F-A-18 Hornet. This gave the jet improved stability at high speeds and during sharp maneuvers. It was a statement to the world that Iran could take an older design and give it a modern touch. Beyond the visible changes, the Seek included upgrades in avionics, with Iranian-developed radar systems and electronic warfare components. Although these were nowhere near the capabilities of Western fourth or fifth generation fighters, they allowed the jet to function as a capable regional interceptor and light attack aircraft. The weapons integration was also expanded. The seat could carry Iranian-produced air-to-air -air missiles, guided bombs, and in some configurations, even anti-ship weapons, giving it a multi-role capability that exceeded the limits of the original F-5E. In terms of numbers, the jet was limited, but in terms of symbolism, it was powerful. For Iran, it was not simply a fighter aircraft, it was a declaration of independence. In terms of performance, the Sikh maintained speeds of up to Mach 1.6, similar to the original Tiger II. Its combat radius was approximately 1,500 kilometers with external fuel tanks, giving it reasonable range for patrol and interception missions. Its armament included twin 20mm cannons and seven hardpoints for bombs, rockets, or missiles. While its radar system had only limited beyond visual range capability, it was sufficient for the regional threats Iran expected to face. Critics in the West dismissed the aircraft as outdated and irrelevant in the age of stealth and fifth-generation technology. But that was never the purpose of the Sikh. It was designed not to defeat an F-35 or Su-57, but to secure Iran's skies, provide local defense, and demonstrate resilience against international isolation. When the Sikh was first shown in 2007, it shocked many analysts. Images of the twin-tail Iranian jet flying over the desert spread quickly, and its presence at Iranian military parades and air shows became a symbol of national pride. By 2010, the aircraft had entered limited squadron service, and by 2015 reports suggested that at least a handful of units were operational. At air shows, the Sikh would perform aerobatic maneuvers that impressed crowds and sent a strong political message. Iran's air force was alive, and it was not going away. The name Sikh, meaning Thunderbolt, was deeply symbolic in Persian culture. Thunderbolts are sudden, powerful, and unstoppable. By naming its fighter after such a force of nature, 
Iran was presenting the aircraft as not only a weapon but also as a spiritual and cultural symbol. It represented divine strength, resilience, and the idea that even when surrounded by enemies and isolated by sanctions, Iran could still strike with force. This symbolism amplified the Sikh's importance far beyond its raw performance numbers. Internationally, reactions to the Sikh varied widely. Western analysts often dismissed it as nothing more than an upgraded F-5 with cosmetic changes, highlighting its limited avionics and lack of stealth. Regional observers, however, recognized its practical value. For a country like Iran, having a fleet of low-cost, easy-to-maintain fighters capable of performing interception, light attack, and even limited naval strike roles was strategically useful. Within Iran, the Sikh was marketed as a breakthrough in domestic aerospace capability, a source of pride and a sign that despite sanctions, the nation could innovate. Of course, the aircraft had weaknesses. Compared to modern fourth-generation fighters like the F-16 or Eurofighter Typhoon, it was far less advanced. It lacked stealth features, had limited radar range, and its production numbers remained too small to significantly alter the balance of power in the Middle East. Yet these shortcomings did not erase the aircraft's strengths. It was affordable, relatively simple to build, and good for training pilots while still offering combat functionality. More importantly, it gave Iran the ability to say that its air force was not dependent on foreign suppliers for every aircraft. In asymmetric warfare, where Iran relies on missiles, drones, and unconventional strategies to counter its technologically superior adversaries, the Sikh fit into a broader strategy rather than standing alone as a game-changing weapon. It was part of a mosaic of military capabilities designed to keep Iran competitive and unpredictable on the battlefield. Today, the Sikh continues to serve in limited numbers, but its legacy is larger than its squadron size. It stands as proof of Iran's determination to sustain its air force under conditions that many thought would make such achievements impossible. The story of the Sikh is not just about building a jet. It is about survival, national pride, and the ingenuity born from necessity. It demonstrates that even when cut off from the global supply chain, a nation can reverse engineer, innovate, and create something that flies. From the outside, the Sikh may look like just an old F-5 with modifications, but from within Iran, it represents much more. It represents decades of persistence, the triumph of engineers working under sanctions, and the transformation of a Cold War relic into a new symbol of independence. When one sees the Sikh soaring across Iranian skies, twin tails cutting through the desert air, what is being witnessed is not just aviation. It is history, politics, and determination turned into motion. So the next time you hear about sleek stealth fighters costing billions, remember the Sikh. A jet that was never supposed to exist but does. A fighter that carries not just missiles but a message. Innovation is born from necessity, and thunder always finds its way to strike. And if this story fascinated you, remember, our next deep dive into aviation history is waiting in the description.